Hello, welcome to What's Broken. Today we're going to be working on a, I think it's a 2001 or 2003 Volkswagen. And I believe it's the, the micro switch assembly in the uh, door activator. It gives weird little symptoms like the interior light stays on, the alarm goes off randomly, the door locks and unlocks, it doesn't know you're sitting in the car, etc. So let's get at it. Phillips head screwdriver for screws. Use a little magnet to use a little magnet to get a hold of them. Down on the bottom there are three looks like three Torx screws. Yeah, so down on the bottom there are three T20 Torx screws. should be able to pop pop the door off So the door handle release pops out of a little holder, lift out a little clip. The courtesy light just sort of fell out. Have a look at that when we're putting it back together. Then just undo the various electrical connections. Ah. This one has a bit of a broken bracket on one side, hence the tape. There we go, all the, uh, all the plug-ins are out, pretty straightforward, they only fit in one place. Next we'll undo the, the speaker, there's two little clips on each side, it just lifts out.
Next we're going to pop off this little rubber rubber cap. I believe these are called triple square. I just bought them yesterday from Princess Auto. A set of eight or nine for I forget twelve or fifteen dollars. Kind of a twelve spline affair. Let's hope it's an M4 because that's the smallest one I have. Ha! Huh. That's the one. So with that bolt, that little M4 bolt taken out, the uh, key lock assembly now can be removed. T30 that I'm using. Well, we got one that's cross threaded or not threaded. little speaker cover comes off. We get at the bottom corner. So in all there are two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Eleven of those to come out. windows up and then there's two of these rubber dust plug can see the two Torx release screws on the, the window frame affair. Incidentally, I'll look at this when we start putting it back together, but something appears to be missing from holding this, the window switch in. Anyhow, I'll come to that later. So there's two T, T30 Torx. Loosen these off a little bit. What that does is it allows the window 
to be lifted back up and then we'll tape it in place. Alright, that should hold it. We'll take out the last T30 bolt. And there's a good sealant around the whole edge. <coughs> but if you just gently pry, It'll come free. Okay, the inner door panel's loose. Pop out these two actuator mounting bolts. Looks like they have a little bit of medium, medium strength blue thread locker on them. The other thing that needs to come free is this plug plug for the window actuator regulator. So the little lock pops up. And that allows that to be free. Like we're going to have a couple of things to release inside. So if you drop it down just a bit, things will start to clear. Okay, to get the actuator and micro switch out. You need to unplug the harness off the bottom. I'm not sure if these just pop off or not. Looks like one's broken. Yeah, it just pops out. Take this grommet out. So the, the door release cable comes with it. And then just give it a little bit of a twist and the, the actual manual door lock pops out of the, the actuator. So here we have it. Uh, Going to take it over to the garage, clean it up. pop this cover off and see if any of the solder joints have broken loose. Well, good morning or afternoon. So I didn't take this to the to the garage. I'm sitting here at my coffee table. Anyhow, this piece I need to take the cover off and inspect the solder joints or solder points. 
and this piece was slid in here somewhat obscuring this one text sorry torque screw and that popped out from under the rivet this was a little bit loose to begin with so I don't know if that was already broken or not anyway I will need to drill out this rivet and put a new one on maybe a little bit of epoxy or something to make sure it's properly secured uh, the next thing I turn this cable a little sideways it's out of the way and this spring has to be removed I think you want to be seems to be under pretty good tension yeah, yeah it's under good tension so that's out of the way Look, there's a little clip here We'll pop out. What is there? One, two, three, four, five, six torque screws. Ah, uh, seven. And try to wiggle that cover out. I also think probably a screw there. I would like to separate this lock part just to make it easier to work on. So I think that torque screw may have to come out. And perhaps this one, I'm not sure yet. I'm glad the torque screws didn't get any smaller because this is the smallest bit I have with me. I'm really hoping that it's just a solder point rather than or something obvious rather than having to go buy a whole new assembly. Kind of seems we throw out far too much nowadays. Some things aren't even built to be rebuilt. Put these aside so I don't don't lose them. Oh, there was one more, wasn't there? Where was that? Right there. Somebody was saying that, but I wasn't listening. is a really small one. Oh no. Yeah, I think it's a smaller head than the others. This Torx bit just doesn't fit but it grabs it enough. Yeah, it is a wee bit smaller, so I don't know what size that is. What am I missing? Two 
the bag. Yet, how oh, this all sort of got to be a trick to how it just sort of pops apart because it did go together I think yeah, something like that Try and remember that. Now, yeah. one more screw hiding underneath that assembly. So one of those, oh, that's good, good, good. change for any of these pieces are or have been. I'm just going to make some little little marks to try to keep everything in sync so it all fits back together because I don't want to start screwing around with that. So after looking at a number of different forums on the internet and lots of guys who have worked on these, inside here all the solder joints look good. The micro switches look clean. This one looks like it might be the culprit. So you can either use a Dremel, which is at the garage, or very carefully just cut off the cut off the two button heads 
hopefully. The worst case scenario, I'm going to have to buy a whole new assembly for $240 or try to source locally and looking at this I would say it's a micro switch I don't know if I'll try zooming in see if I can get you a close up Not sure how well that focuses or will come out, but this is definitely definitely broken. So I'm going to try to source a I'm going to try to source this switch locally, or worst case, maybe order it from Amazon or something. I'd rather shop locally, but. Once I can find one, we'll bring it back and try to solder it back in place. Okay, so I'm just getting back to this after, a, I don't know, two or three or four days. So how this works between the door lock and the, the micro switches there's three micro switches inside here and a fourth one to tell the VW that the door is open or closed. The circuit board inside here I used a magnifying glass, inspected all the solder points everything looked to be in really good shape uh, The I think it's called conformal coating, the red stuff sort of a varnish was all intact, nothing appeared to be broken loose or vibrated loose. And when I found this uh, micro switch, the button that activates it on or off, which is normally covered with a little rubber boot, that's worn, the, but the button's missing and the boot's gone. So by taking a little knife, I pried on these four tabs, popped it apart. And how this functions is when the button's in, let me get a little pointer. So when the button's in, and I hope you can see this, it breaks the contact between these two points. And when the button's out, it closes the contact which would allow uh, the, the I'm assuming 12 volts or whatever it's stepped down to to flow through these red and blue wires. What activates the button and again I hope this shows up is right now the door is closed so we'll un unlock it or open it so if you look at this point, this little wheel in here, part of the mechanism, it's, it's somewhat cammed or this part is, is further out than the other part of the wheel will be when the door is closed. So if we close the door, Whereas that part of the wheel was rounded, this is flat. So this allows the button to come out. And when the door is opened, this part of the, the wheel pushes the button in. So then what happens? So right now, the door is in the, just let me get these in place, so 
So right now the button is out, meaning the door is closed. I have ordered this part, uh, but I am having some a little bit of grief with the online site. So what I'm going to do is cut these two wires, solder this together, cover it with some heat shrink, and essentially that will tell the car or the Volkswagen that the door is always closed. In the mean, and also in the meantime, I'm going to try to find a new micro switch. The whole assembly here, depending on where you look, you can find it for $45 all the way up to $400. So uh, I'm trying to either source a new assembly or just find a new micro switch for under $10. So I'm going to get this buttoned up and then I'll go put it back in the car. The customer can drive the car the way it is. It will always just think that the door is closed and you're not going to drive the car with the door open, hopefully. Uh, and then if I can either source a new switch or a whole new assembly for a reasonable price, we'll just swap those out. There's the door closed and the circuit is closed. The door is open, that cam mechanism spreads the contacts, there's no power going through it, so the circuit's open. So we'll clip these off. I don't have my wire strippers, so I'll do it do it the old school way. And if I do find a micro switch, I'll, I'll either just solder it back up to these two wires and, and uh, heat shrink them, or I'll desolder from the circuit board and just run it all the way through. I'll make that decision when I get there. These are solid wires, not separate strands. Kind of makes it a wee bit easier. I'll get this set up and then bring you back while I put a dab of solder on it. Okay, got the solder and iron warmed up. I'm more of a welder than a solderer. <laughs> Anyway, we'll let that cool off for a minute, and then I'll put the heat shrink on. And then flick your bick. Yeah, I'm going to hang on to this switch. I'll kind of pop it back together. And try to source one of these from somewhere.
next step is, is trying to remember how this goes back together. Okay, let's try to fit this thing back together. We need to pull this back. Wasn't bad. This little clip's in place. I think this was the one little screw. So this one is a T a T8 Torx. larger one on the back side. It's a T20. Goes in right there. This is supposed to go on first. There's another T20 Torx, but it has a built in washer, which I believe went in here. But before I get too far, little spring clip needs to go needs to get set in place there we go the little tail end of that spring fits into a little now this one was under a fair amount of tension. It sat down in there. There we go. Now it, it doesn't fit in here it was sitting down below just against the plastic so the door is locked or closed that releases it again the door is closed think of that as the door pin And then it opens. 
all good. One of the other issues I saw was this piece slides into here. And fits around that rivet. Now I didn't break it taking it out. I did notice that this was loose. So it looked like either somebody's been in here before and pulled it out without drilling out that rivet. It almost looks like a, a pull break and not a vibration break. Shows some stress there. So what I'll probably do off camera when I go to put this back in, I'm going to stop by where my tools are, drill out this rivet, and re-rivet this back on. Other than that, what else goes on here? That clips into place. And it pops in there. The other end here goes to the door handle inside the driver's door. So when it's pulled on, This goes to the driver's yeah. So how does this sit? When it's in the car, this one goes into the driver's the outside door handle to release. And this one goes and clips on the inside door, driver's door handle to release. Just incidentally, uh, other than owning a few tools and not a whole bunch, I don't have any background. This is the first one of these I've taken apart. So my point there is, is that, you know, you don't have to be a, a nuclear brain surgeon to do this. Uh, key is taking pictures as you take something apart, you know. I, I tend to be forgetful, so I like to take pictures. I'll even write down the process of, of what, it, what it is I'm doing. Failing that, I go on the internet, and there's no shortage of, of very helpful people out there who have done this already, and you can just study their videos and save yourself, you know, a pile of money down at the gay rash. I just plug the wire harness back into the bottom of the assembly so for all the micro switches. So apparently to to hold the assembly somewhat in place once it's plugged in and the door lock is is connected. <clears throat> and this little plastic I don't know template or plastic holding bracket there were two button type things that I'm assuming were supposed to friction hold somehow inside these two holes in the tin, the inner door, uh, the inner door cover. They don't work, or they don't work right now. So the workaround on that was I just took a zip strap, strapped this into place. That way, if any further work needs to be done, if I do end up coming back and replacing that micro switch or the whole assembly I'll just simply cut that and use another one from what it looks like it's not really support so much as it's just to hold it in place until you get it back inside and bolt everything up okay let's give that a try so a bit of a juggling act to start to get these pieces in.
So that's almost set into place. Try to get these end bolts started. I got the bottom one in. You just sort of shuffle the top back and forth. Just trying to fish that door release cable. There we go. As long as we can get it started with a few threads, we should be all right. Looking good so far. All right. Start to button a few of these up a little bit. making sure they're good and snug. Well now I think we can put the door skin on and then finish up that outer handle. I'll just tighten these assembly bolts in place. And those are those M8 12 point spline, I think they're called triple square sockets. First time I've ever used them. Okay, I think earlier in the video I might have shown or mentioned that this was fairly loose. The bottom brackets seemed broken. Again, good old zip ties. I just ran one through and it supports it against the surface on the inside. So it's in there fairly solid now. Drop it into place on the, the window guide or channel, whatever you want to call it. Tighten up the two torque screws. They were I think those were T20s as well. Pop these two rubber or plastic, rubber, rubber plastic. Back in place.
That wasn't bad, it just popped in. Just sort of get one part started and push it in as you go around. We'll plug the window assembly back in, or the power for it. Lock it in place. Down here, this is for the little light to show you, I think, that the alarm set uh, plugs in plugs into the other end here. And it's for where the door lock comes out. This end of it's broken, so I'll be using good old black electrical tape to button that up. Yeah, this unit's, well, it's about 20 years old and it's a daily driver, so customer just wants to keep it running. I get it, because I'm driving a 20-year-old vehicle as well that I just want to keep running. Now the trunk lock and the, the gas cap, those just get pushed back on. Then we have the plugs for the driver window and the passenger window. Plug for the mirror, or mirrors. And last but not least, the door locks. And this hook here just gets hooked through the back side of the handle and clips into place. That was easy. Now before I do anything else I think I'll function test it all. All, all seems to be working good so far. The last little bit. Feeding that through. Pop the clips into place. And there's the three screws right at the bottom. Put the two handle screws back in. These are in. These are Robertson's. Oops. Next, the handle or the cover just. Snaps back in place. Now to set this, well I don't think there's much setting to do. You just don't want it loose. It just pops into place. It finds its the spline. Key pops into place. And now we're going to put this little M M4 set screw in. Followed by a plug. Just 
do a little taste test. So that's locked. Unlocked. So to wrap up this video, everything function tests except for the little cable and it's got a little plastic end on it that fits into this handle. I believe that's worn out so every time that I set it or reset it and pull the handle, this handle is a little loose too. It pops out of its guide. However, we can open it up there. I've tested the uh, So everything function tests. Windows go up and down. Doors lock and they unlock other than that exterior door. The trunk opens and the gas cap release opens. So currently it's unlocked. We'll lock it, the buttons go down. And it's locked up. So at present, uh, the issue is that the cable that attaches to this handle, but I think between the handle being loose and the end of the cable is plastic so it's worn out. That is causing the no, well, yeah that is causing the door to not work. Anyhow I'm gonna button this one up for tonight. Call it semi-successful. Uh, may bring you back if we end up replacing the lock assembly. I probably will do a short video if I if I take that door handle apart and replace it. Yeah, the mirrors are working, so it's a 98% win. Okay, we'll uh, see you on the next one. Bye for now.